Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Thinking Effect podcast. This is uh, episode number 11, which is all about how do we help children make decisions? But before we jump into it, hello, Lilian, how are you? Hey, Otto, I'm really well, um, living down in Sorrento for a little while um, because my house is undergoing some <laughs> renovations, but happily ensconced here and enjoying it very much. And I believe you've just had a lovely break. Oh, I had the most amazing holiday in far north Queensland where we snorkeled at the Great Barrier Reef and uh, hiked in the jungle, did night walks in the jungle, and it was just spectacular, the most amazing holiday. That's fantastic. Yeah, I think, um, you know, I always love going away with family because you just make so many new discoveries, you get new memories that you are getting together. And so, yeah, it's really, really special. But here you are, back, ready to work, aren't you? <laughs> yes, and I'm really excited about this episode because... Decision making is not an easy thing to do, even for us grown ups. And I see, you know, often when I have discussion with my friend, they, they are stuck on this path where they have different um, ideas or different uh, possibilities or options to choose from. And then they kind of stuck and they don't know how to make the right decision, how to choose which path to go. And, and sometimes when we get stuck on that stage, we, it can paralyze us and stop us from moving forward. And this is why it's so important to teach children as well, how can they take decision, what they need to do, what the process that they need to take in order to know which idea to, to take forward, which path to choose. And this episode, in this episode, we're focusing on choosing criteria to evaluate different ideas in order to choose the one that is most suitable for what you want to achieve. That's right. I think people underestimate, as you said, the, the, the complexity of making decisions. And, you know, sometimes in that confusion, they try to apply and compare things that don't really relate. So, you know, they, they might talk about size on the one hand and, and noise on the other. And, you know, they're not getting a direct comparison. You are listening to the Thinking Effect podcast with Otto Green and Lillian Kriegler. Listen on if you are ready to take your students on a journey to change the world one thought at a time. What we call apples, uh, comparing apples with apples. And that's the joy and the beauty of having criteria because it really clarifies the thinking when you are going through that process. But as you say, there's quite, um, there's quite a few stages that you go through to establish criteria. Yeah, absolutely. Um, when, you, when you think about criteria, you need to think what are your goals, what do you want to achieve and, and based on that, you need to come up with criteria that will allow you to find the feasible ideas, the one that you can actually take forward, but also help you achieve your goals. And I think one of the good thing about coming up with criteria is also to remove your attachment to your own ideas. So you, you won't take a decision based on, hey, I really like that idea I came with, or this idea is really cool. <laughs> Because maybe it's not the most suitable idea or not uh, the best idea in terms of reaching your goals or achieving the outcomes uh, you want to achieve. And, and that's why it's so important to take the time and, and, and think about um, the question you're working on or the problem you're working on. And, and then think about what criteria are the most suitable in order for, for me or for us to um, assess and evaluate different ideas and then uh, get to the conclusion of which ideas are best to take forward. Yes, I think what you're mentioning there, Autel, is that, that this process of um, generating ideas and opening up, it starts right at the goal. You know, we don't wait till the end point because sometimes if you just follow a path, you, you, you said, you know, that you, the first idea is very seldom the best one. And if people do that, they get to the end and find that, you know, maybe their pain points or their needs or their desires or what their goals actually weren't really met. 
Um, so opening it up right at the beginning and being quite um, having some consideration about what are the different pathways to achieve those goals is a really important stage that's often left out. And especially asking others their opinions about it and doing it in a collaborative way can really add a lot of um, excellence to the outcome that wouldn't be there if we hadn't broadened it out at the beginning. Absolutely. Uh, broadening up and, and getting diverse thinking and diverse opinion definitely help us achieve better outcomes and come up with better solutions. And, and we can look at an example, you know, to make it... Um, more tangible for for all the teachers yes. who are listening so let's say you um facilitating a project with your students and this the question of this project is how might we design a more supportive learning environment and and we speak a lot about diverge and converge and we will follow that process and and highlight uh these stages as well so you start with diverging right you um your students might interview other students and learn from them about how they feel about the current learning environment. What are their pain points or what they, are they struggling with within the current learning environment? Uh, what do they wish to have within their learning environment? Uh, what might help them learn better? And so you diverge and, you, and your students are really exploring and opening their mind to um, to learning from others, how they experience the learning environment and what's good for them and how a good day at schools might look for them and how a bad day at schools might look for them. And so when they finish with that diverging, they end up with having a lot of information. And this is the time to converge, you know, to narrow down because in order to um, make something meaningful out of the pile of information that you gather, you have to narrow it down and focus. And this is where the students performing data analysis and synthesis and drive insights from all uh, the information they gather, from all the inputs from different students. And, and looking at our project, they might find that um, student, many students struggle with having a noisy classroom environment. Maybe when they need to work on a task in the classroom and it's very noisy, it comes in the way of um, being able to learn properly and perform the task properly. And maybe they'll find through their insights that uh, many students wish to have a more collaborative environment, that they wish to work with other classes and maybe other classes from different year level, that they really feel that collaborating with other students will enhance their learning environment and their ability to learn and maybe another insight might be that students are not comfortable with the current sitting arrangement maybe they're not comfortable sitting on their chairs or uh, they bang their knees on the desk i actually heard that from different students <laughs> so um so at the end of that convergent the students have uh, many insights from the research and that with the uh, question that they started with, uh, enable them to now diverge again and come up with different ideas as to how they might solve this problem, how, may, how they might design a supportive learning environment. That, I love that you go to the students with a question like this. And it could be beautiful at the beginning of the year for, for teachers you know, to, to really get students on board with the learning and their um, their um, involvement and engagement, and I I also love the idea of um, you know opening it up to the students because they do listen to other people's opinions and they don't just think oh I want this kind of classroom and they realise you know how difficult it is to cater for many people in an environment. And the thing I really loved about what you've just said, um, Autel, is this kind of a helical effect, you know, so you, you, you divert and then you converge and you divert and you converge. And each time you converge, you're coming closer to what is feasible, what is going to be good for, you know, perhaps more people in the room than, than if, if you just stopped at the first convergence. So it's great to see that kind of thinking. And also what's happening in, in that um, converging is the criteria are coming out of that. 
So, you know, you talked about noise and people sitting at their desks and um, collaboration. So if they just have a very general discussion like that, they might not find the criteria. So you want to go up to like, what is the category or what is the thing that we're talking about and come up with some key words. So some of these might be, let's, let's look at noise level. Let's look at space. Let's look at process, like, you know, how are we going to learn together? And let's then look at what you've just said is the logistics. How are we going to implement these ideas, the ones that we choose? So, you know, getting them involved in this, this lovely um, diverging and converging process, getting everyone's ideas, categorizing them and finding the themes, because then the criteria become very clear. And we were saying that that is what helps with the decision making, um, you know, so the process is beautiful when you when you get it going. Yeah, absolutely. And I agree with you that it's it's important to uh, facilitate such a project at the beginning of the year and, and to create that environment right from the get go that cater for everyone needs because, you know, different students are, have different needs. And as you said, when they interview other students, suddenly they realize that, oh, actually, this person has different needs than my own. I actually am fine with noisy environment, but for, for my peer, for the person I'm actually interviewing now, they really struggle with that. So it's important for, for students to understand that different people learn differently and they have different needs from the learning environment. And when we design our learning environment, we need to take into account and to consideration all of the different needs and how we can cater for, for introvert and extrovert and, and different learning styles. So it's a great um, way for students to, to learn that there is much more to it than, than only their needs. Because often children uh, are so um, concerned with their, their needs only <laughs> that they can't see other people's needs. And so it's a great exercise in, in developing empathy and understanding of how other people operate and think and feel. And, and, and you're right, as we diverge and converge, it, it brings us closer to understanding what the criteria should be. So when the students have their insights from the research, uh, this is a, the um, stage where they need to diverge again and come up with ideas as now they have a lot of um, uh, valuable information. So they can come up with ideas that suitable for for the students uh, and 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 come up with ideas that will help them develop uh, create that um, supportive learning environment and and some ideas might be um, let's have flexible seating arrangement in our classroom let's have you know bean bags and and a few um, regular chairs and maybe some sofas and uh, a rug we can sit on and, and maybe we can have some noise cancelling headphones in our classroom. So if there are a few students that need that quiet when they work on a task, they can put it on and then they can concentrate on the learning. And some other ideas might be, um, maybe we can have a quiet room, you know, when students become overwhelmed um, with, the, um, with the stimulation when they need to just come down and relax and be in a quiet place, maybe we can have a dedicated room that they can go to, spend five minutes there, just relax, and then come back to the classroom, able to learn. And some other ideas might be around the collaboration. Maybe we can um, join together and, and learn different topics with other classroom from our year level and maybe from other year levels. So, the students can come up with many ideas, well, let's say 20, 30 ideas as to how they can design a more supportive learning environment. And this is where you need as a teacher to help them uh, narrow down again, uh, converge again and decide on criteria in terms of how they can assess all of these ideas in a meaningful way. So this is where we need to become real and think, is it feasible? Can we really make it happen? But also, will it help us achieve our goals with this idea, basically help us achieve that supportive learning environment and, and cater for, for different students? Yes, and I think once they've had all those discussions, they'll understand what is possible and what isn't 
possible. And there's a real authenticity around it because everyone's been involved. It's not like, you know, you decided as an educator, you're coming into this classroom and you're going to make it gorgeous. So you'll put all those things in there, but then you find that they're not used because the students don't genuinely understand why the noise cancelling headphones are there or why the sofa's there. And you might even find that elsewhere in the school, you know, you can't afford, we know, we're speaking about logistics and affordability and what's possible. If you can't get a full on quiet room, you know, what's to say that the librarian, for instance, might, might not allow children to come in and sit quietly for 15 or 20 minutes and then leave again? You know, and, and the students, because they've brokered it and they've discussed it and it's their decision, uh, they're much more responsible about it. And so everyone, um, is, it, there's, a, there's a genuine, um, I suppose, environment of respect and responsibility, which comes with being part of a decision making process, particularly one that is so careful and taking things into account and evaluating everything really carefully and evaluating based on these criteria that people now understand. Um, so it can be such a game changer in the classroom having this kind of process available to both educators and students, really. Absolutely, because then the students are part of, of it. They have the buy-in because they're driving this change. And yes. so they're very much invested in it. And, and it's, it will be interesting to, to ask the students when they come up with criteria to explain why. Why should we take that criteria? And this is an opportunity for your students to practice their persuasion techniques and communication skills because they'll need to persuade their, um, their class members that this should be the right criteria. That's the criteria that will help us um, choose the right solution uh, for our problem or for the question we're working on. So it's great. I always enjoy listening to this conversation with the students because they often surprise you with how clever they are and how um, they can reason so well and, and find justification for their thinking. And it's also give you uh, an opportunity to, to see how they think, right? To learn the thinking process. Um, and so uh, it's a great opportunity to exercise other skills with your students. And, and also I wanna say something about constraint because we mentioned whether something is feasible, for example. And, and sometimes we see um, budget as a constraint and it might be a constraint, but maybe it's not really a constraint. Maybe if the students want to create a flexible seating arrangement and they need to purchase you know bin bags and rug and sofa or whatever it is and the schools the school doesn't have the budget maybe they can run a um, fundraising event right maybe they can find sponsor a company that will sponsor that initiative and, and provide the funds required to purchase um, what they need so we always need to be careful with what we put as a constraint <laughs> Uh, because sometimes it's not a real constraint. It's something that we can be creative and find ways to overcome this constraint. Oh, I love that. That's such a great idea. That's true. You know, rather than saying we can't afford this, it's asking how can we afford this? And so it becomes a new goal and we start the whole process all over again. <laughs> so the process is interesting. I mean, you know, first of all, you're stating the goal and then exploring. Is that the best goal? surveying all the ideas, finding out, you know, how it's going to impact on the audience, capturing those ideas, you know, they need to be written down, collected, brainstormed, then finding what are the themes, what are the, the genuine ideas, because this almost brings you to a new reality. So you started off with a goal, but now your goal is you understand it much better. Um, broaden out, get lots of ideas, then converge, evaluate those ideas. When you've chosen what you want to do, choose how you're going to do it. So there's a very long process, but it becomes much more defined and the students will get used to this and they'll be able to use it in other situations. Like how do you choose the best um, team for a particular game or match? You know, So they, 
it, it's it's skills that as you say they're learning it around this question but they can apply it somewhere else and for me all education that's really valuable can be transferred and applied in other contexts uh, you'll hear me saying that a lot <laughs> so, yeah so also it really is a, a marvelous thing helping students to make decisions and establishing criteria for doing that yeah definitely and i agree with you it's a skill for life i mean all our life we need to make a decision and we need to know how to go about it in in an educated and informed way not just jump into the first idea or go with oh that's a really cool idea it sounds really awesome let's just do that so we need to um really know how we can go about it so we make the right decision for us for us throughout our life because it's something that we need to do all the time so it's best to help students um, understand and know what process they can take in order to take the right decisions um and and the younger you start the better <laughs> absolutely right absolutely you, you i mean as an early childhood specialist i promise you we made lots of great decisions um in our classrooms with very young children so shall we summarize yeah um, yes please okay so our topic you know how do we support and help students make decisions the what is that there's a process for doing decision making and students can be supported to to do that because you want to make the best decisions the why is that when you go through this process it opens up the possibilities and gives students a broader perspective and they can be more empathetic and more targeted um, in what they want to achieve and the how is to involve everyone to survey people to capture all the ideas to evaluate the ideas come up with the criteria and then apply the criteria and that helps us you know to get students who are thinking on their feet and thinking together um, in the best possible ways to make decisions Absolutely. And we would love to hear from you, as, as always, educator around the globe. We would love to hear your experience with um, helping your students learn how to choose criteria to assess their ideas and find the most suitable solution uh, for the problem at hand. And if you facilitate such a project, um, how might we design a supportive learning environment? We would love to hear about that too. So please write to us um, at the thinking effect podcast at gmail.com and this week one lucky educator is gonna win my book think unique which is your comprehensive guide as to how to create an innovative learning environment in your classroom so uh, we look forward to hearing from all of you and next week in episode 12 it's all about how could we improve children thinking by breaking habits. Yep, a great topic. And um, thank you for listening, everyone. And we very much look forward to seeing you in the next podcast.